So the Sound Blaster X3 is right in the wheelhouse of what we think about when we're looking for a gaming-related audio product. It also has a form factor that makes it look like a much more expensive unit, and it seemingly packs all of Creative's Sound Blaster muscle together into one product. One of the more versatile units I've seen, if I'm being honest. The thing to keep in perspective today is that we have a pretty split audience between your budget-conscious gamer who's looking to elevate their gameplay or just improve their audio a little bit, the audiophile curious, and then those of you who have already crossed the point of no return into audiophile territory. So we're going to break this thing down today and see which, if any, of those categories the X3 fits into. You ready? Let's go! Yo, big thanks to Glassy Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. Based in Southern California, Glassy Eyewear has the sickest frames out for sunglasses, prescription eyeglasses, and gaming glasses, which help to block blue light if you find yourself spending a lot of time in front of your screen. Honestly, I was pretty skeptical about these at first. Now I absolutely swear by them. Blue light, especially from our monitors, can really compound the feeling of eye strain. Like when I'm sitting in front of my panel, for hours on end working on edits, my eyes felt absolutely smoked at the end of the day. That's how I first found Glassy and I'm super glad I did. Because we often game and work in headphones, they even have some models with really thin arms. So you don't have to worry about them interfering with your headphone pads or being uncomfortable at all, even with headphones that have a high degree of clamping force. Unlike other blue light brands you've seen before, Glassy does have the yellow tinted lenses, but they also have just straight up clear. I leave the house in these all the time because I forget I even have them on. They have frame styles that feel fresh too, not like the selection at the eye doctor. These are frames you'll actually want to wear. And if you find something you really like, they do really affordable prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses as well. They've even got a 14 day return policy if you're just not feeling it. If you want to grab some for yourself, hit the link down in the description and use code BADSEEDTECH to save 10% off your total order at glassyeyewear.com. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the Sound Blaster X3 external DAC amp from Creative. Currently available for around 120 USD, the X3 is an external DAC amp or external sound card similar to what we've seen in the G6, but this sports a different form factor and brings Creative's X5 Gen 2 to the table. First impressions, the unit is quite a bit larger than I'd imagined, a sentiment I get used to hearing. It's light, build quality isn't immediately impressive, it feels pretty cheap, hollow, plasticky, in fairness, not unlike the JDS Atom, but the wheel has some wobble to it as well, and despite it looking nice on camera, the build quality feels a little less than the G6 for sure. The unit is bus powered via USB-C, so no power bricks, that's always a plus for me. On the rear, you also have a 3.5 millimeter line in and an optical out. Showing its external sound card versus DAC amp roots, your line outs are 3.5 millimeters and they're split out like you would find on your motherboard for true discrete 5.1 or 7.1 support. Not something we generally see on an external audio device, particularly at this price point. On the front, you have access to a front-facing 3.5 headphone jack and a 3.5 mic input as well. You also have your big volume knob here that doubles as a mute on press, and you have controls for audio balance, mode select, and Super X5 features. These buttons feel okay, but they really drive home that hollow, plasticky feel. setup here is a little more involved than most. First, you'll need to download the Super XFi app to your phone and take a picture of your ears and face so it can create an audio map. Then on your PC, you'll download and install the Sound Blaster command software. And then using the Super XFi account you created, you'll need to log in and complete the info for your creative account as well. And finally, load the head mapping from the XFi to the X3 device. Okay, now that we're up and running, obviously software is gonna be a part of the equation here. You can operate this unit in its stock form as a direct DAC amp with no software if you travel with it, but you do miss out on a lot of functionality if you do this. You do get three audio EQ modes right out of the box though, music, movie, and footstep enhancer, known previously as scout mode, and also the ability to toggle the unit into direct mode, which bypasses all the signal processing and just gives it to you straight as the recording intended. You can also tweak any of these presets in the software so they're available as a hotkey. One big step forward, they finally have here is zero latency mic monitoring or side tone. You can still use their suite of voice filters and effects and when you do you will have some lag on the output but you don't hear it that way it's just the nature of the DSP processing but you have no latency in what you hear no lag sounds great. You can control the mic volume on the main knob when the LED ring is red. The only time you can't get mic monitoring is when you're running in direct mode because again that bypasses all of the internal DSP. I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality of the mic input here. It is two channel and it's 24 bit and it has two modes so run in standard mode without mic boost on you're going to basically want this thing dimed out 
all the way in terms of mic input volume but what you get is very clean because like your noise floor like when i stop talking that's like around negative 50 db so really very clean even with this dimed out all the way it still sounds a little low for me though so it's nice to have that mic boost when you do engage mic boost that's a big power increase you want to make sure you have your monitoring turned down so you don't get feedback especially if you're in open back headphones this gets you a lot more range in terms of what you can do with the volume of your mic signal like i run this at about 30 or 40 percent the problem here is that the gain across the board is higher so your low noise floor kind of goes away it's going to hit somewhere between like negative 40 and negative 35 so pretty noisy this is not affected at all if you use push to talk in game because you just get what you get when you hit the button we've got a setting called smart volume which is basically a way to say software compressor which if you're running on stream anytime you have a tendency to like hit that crazy trick shot or clutch that round you may get like really loud on this thing well if you do that this helps control your voice so the guys listening to you aren't getting their eardrums blown out when you're clipping that signal you can get really loud on this thing like you're trying to clip it and still be all right while we're talking about features they snuck another big one in here it's what they call audio balance this allows you to have your main audio device and then use the spitif driver to handle a secondary source and mix between the two on the fly the most obvious example of this is setting your pc to use the main audio and then using discord as the spitif device and having a functional chat mix this is indicated by the ring color on the led as well with orange as one source cyan on the other and green indicating perfect equilibrium between the two you also have access to their legacy surround sound now for me this is largely throwaway but if you enjoy this or have used it before it's still there for you they haven't got rid of it they also offer super x fine mode this works and it does create a convincing effect, but it has very specific applications. Stuff it's not great for, regular music recordings. Just completely destroys the dynamics and I can't imagine anyone finding this a more enjoyable way to listen to their music library. FPS shooters, no. It does provide directional cues, I'll give it that. But the problem is that it seems to specialize in things that are happening really far away from you. Like if you're not seeing anyone and you're trying to figure out where all the action is, fine. The issue here is while it does actually create a sense of distance, it makes everything feel really far away. Even stuff that should be centered and loud, like enemies right next to you sound like they're really far away. Keep in mind, I only play Modern Warfare, which in my opinion has a really strong audio engine, but this does absolutely nothing for it. Given the option, I would choose not to game in any competitive setting with Super X5. Stuff it is good for, live music recording, concert performance video, stuff where the fidelity of the audio kind of takes a backseat to the immersive nature of the event this works really well movie and video content yes definitely offers a more cinematic feeling size to the material and does convincingly make you feel like you're sitting in a true surround sound field not a really high-end surround sound system a very average surround system but it's a good effect and for movie watching i prefer it to direct mode or to movie eq mode i've said this before but if your source material is encoded with dolby atmos then dolby atmos headphone for windows is really what you want to be using any other surround sound encoding you can defer to super x5 for that and it'll do a really good job it's also decent for big open world games as well this works here because you get that big cinematic feel and you also get pretty solid directional cues at the same time it's worth noting too that you can actually eq the super x5 mode it has its own eq preset away from the other modes that you see in regular operation so i mean just a lot of features and there's profile support so it loads up set up the right way when you load into your game you can really tweak the audio here to sound the way you prefer it to sound plus console support supports everything except the xbox there is no optical in here so like if you're not using this thing in a desktop environment you can use this thing in your entertainment center and have it being fed by your ps4 or your media pc if it's coming off the pc it can do dolby digital decoding as well and it can output to a discrete 5.1 or 7.1 system and you can even control it from the couch with a phone app going over bluetooth low energy connection it's important to note here there is no actual audio exchange over the bluetooth it's just the controls it's just a wildly flexible device at this price point but there has to be a catch right the catch here not surprisingly comes in total power output they advertise that this thing can handle headphones up to 600 ohm based on my experience that's a stretch. Low gain gets you 1.2 volts at 32 ohm. I can't find power specs for the G6, but I can tell you that the GSX-1000 gets you one volt RMS at 32 ohm. These figures are represented in volts here because to see these numbers represented in watts or more accurately milliwatts versus some of the bigger headphone amp, the $100 amps or the stacks that we've been looking at recently, it's not impressive at all. For instance, the X3 in low gain mode puts up 45 milliwatts at 32 ohm. High gain, 35 milliwatts at 105 ohms total versus something like the Magni 3 amp that's putting out 2.4 watts or 2,400 milliwatts per channel, making the Magni 3 or the Atom from JDS 
infinitely more powerful than this device standalone. But that's the same thing we already knew about the GSX-1000. The X3 is also capable of higher bit rates than the GSX-1000. The X3 can go all the way to 32192. Now, I did test this on a couple different systems. 3296, 32192 just don't sound good. You get this like digital crunch where you can hear the filtering going to work because all that's taking place on the unit itself. Really for me, you can go like 3248, but I feel like the sweet spot here is 2448. That's where it seems to sound the best for me and have the best dynamics. So one takeaway here is that as a standalone product, the X3 is objectively better than the GSX-1000 without even getting into stuff like signal to noise and total harmonic distortion. It has the same feature set, plus a ton more options and it's more powerful, if even slightly. It just is the better product, especially in terms of value. The other takeaway here is that there's definitely a line where this stops being able to handle higher end headphones that lands it firmly in gaming territory, which is not really surprising for $120. Of the popular headphones of late, the HD 58X feels pretty good running high gain mode. Not the best I've heard, but still solid volume output. Same on the K7XX and the 250 ohm DT990 sounds good on it, even though I can max the volume on it. Anything really outside of that and the unit starts to fall short. Of course you can and still stack it with an atom like we looked at recently. The form factor is really similar though the X3 overhangs it just a bit but for 220 bucks you'd have an uncompromising gaming focused audio setup that would handle the vast majority of headphones you'd ever want to play around with. Does stuff like the shit stack or the arc 2 or the OL atom stack sound better? Yeah from an audiophile standpoint. It's hard to articulate how exactly but it generally comes down to a better dynamic range, more clarity, better separation and in some circumstances a more cohesive feel or a better overall tone to the source material. But in fairness, that's for music listening. That's lost if you're primarily gaming and you're sacrificing all the gaming features. And I gotta say too that the background noise on the X3 is honestly very quiet. So my closing thoughts on this guy. At $120, you're not gonna do better for gaming. This is a Swiss Army knife that's like specifically for the user who's trying to elevate from onboard audio, wants a truckload of features for gaming and media, and isn't necessarily an aspiring audio file. If you already own the G6, you're good sound quality wise unless you want the side tone the chat mix the surround handling and the super x fi if you already own the gsx 1000 you're good unless you want the super x fi or the surround handling for what it is they just did a really nice job with this thing if this had an xlr mic input as well this would be the de facto solution for gaming audio including streaming as always links down in the description for everything we talked about today any questions hit me in the comments or drop by the discord shout out to Aristus for providing some valuable info for today's video and that's it for this time i'm brian p thanks so much for watching don't forget to hit that like button hit that sub button and until next time, stay up.